In this Aspire demonstration movie, we'll focus on the third use case of the project, which is a one-time password generator developed and contributed by Jim Alto. This use case mostly originates from the world of electronic banking. Existing hardware tokens, like the one you see here on the right, allow a user to authenticate himself before he starts online transactions. And he can do so by pushing a button and then getting a one-time password, and he can use that password, for example, to log in in the online banking website of his bank. The goal of this use case is to provide the same functionality and hopefully at the same level of security, but to do so in mobile software. In this use case, an existing authentication protocol is used, and to do that, the application basically needs access to a device key. It's kind of the seed for the uh, random number generator used for generating the tokens as well as a counter that's going to be increased whenever a one-time password is requested. Now actually this use case consists of two phases. The first phase concerns online provisioning. What happens here is that the user launches the application and he inputs some credentials that he got offline. Part of the credentials are then sent by the app to a provisioning server and the server sends back the key. At that point, the application that stores the key persistently and the server share a common secret so they can replay the one-time password generation independently. In the second phase, the application works in an offline mode and just by pressing a button, the user can ask for a new one-time password. The application will give him one, which the user can then use, for example, to log in onto a website or to sign a transaction in his e-banking application on his desktop or laptop computer. When we then have a look into the implementation of this application, we see here on the right that there is a high-level functionality in the form of activity management together with a GUI. Uh, then there are some wrappers and then there is a one-time password library that basically provides all the security sensitive functionality for the provisioning phase, for storage, secure storage, of the keys and of the counter uh, to execute a pin check and then actually to generate the one-time passwords. This functionality in turn is implemented on top of some more basic functionality and external libraries are actually used to implement some of that functionality. Now as shown on the left here, the GUI and the activity management are implemented in Java code. This is an Android Dolphic application. Uh, but the lower level security sensitive functionality is implemented in a dynamically linked library uh, that's compiled from C and C++ code and that's packed into the Android APK of the one-time password application. It is the lower level functionality, the dynamically linked library consisting of native code that we need to protect with the Aspire protections. What are the assets to protect? Well, there's the code performing the pin check, there's the master key, this is the common secret shared between the app and the server to communicate even during the provisioning phase. There's a device key that's obtained from the server. Uh, there's also the storage key that's used to store the counter and the device key securely. And of course, there's the application code. For most keys, the security requirement is that they should be kept confidential and then of course all the code should execute correctly so we need integrity and application correctness for example a one-time password should not be generated until after a pin check has succeeded to enforce those security requirements a whole bunch of complementary protection techniques are proposed by the developers of the application now that we know what this use case is about let's have a look at some live action so, Bert, show us the Gemalto use case, the one-time password generator. We will start with the application and start provisioning with uh, new credentials. Uh, the application has been provisioned and now we can generate, uh, well, we can fill in our pin. and generate new OTPs. Okay, thank you. The SPY project has received funding from the European Union's 7th Framework Program and the grant agreement number 609734. 